Hi, I'm Chris Kellner, uh, here with Datadog. I'm a product solutions architect focused on logs, and I'm joined by the, some members of the engineering team at Life360 today uh, to talk about their company and product and challenges and goals. Uh, please introduce yourself. Thanks, Chris. Hi, I'm Naveen Pula, Director of Cloud Operations at Life360. Uh, I've been an engineer turned uh, startup co-founder, now managing a couple of teams at Life360. Hi, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Naveen. My name is Jesse Gonzalez. I'm a senior staff site reliability at Life360. Uh, I have a long background in system administration, DevOps, and uh, startup life as well. Great. Thanks so much. Um, I want to start with asking you just like maybe describe your business uh, to the audience. Uh, tell us what it is you do, uh, what uh, problems you solve in the world, and we can go from there. Yeah. Uh, Life360 is a consumer facing company uh, with, with a mission critical, mission driven features with family safety at its foreground. Uh, we consider ourselves as the top family safety social networking app and uh, we save lives one of our core features is we save lives by sending ambulances every eight minutes uh, across us and uh, other features include um, place alerts safety alerts um, at, 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 at its core we are evolved we now are into safety around people, pets, and things, uh, with acquisitions recently of Tile and Geobit. Uh, on, a, on a more technical stats point of view, we have about 500 billion miles tracked last year, 100 billion uh, locations collected over a year, of which 25 billion are safe alerts of the dear ones' families. So you have all this infrastructure, you have this mission critical business, uh, life or death. How are you managing that from an observability standpoint and making sure these systems remain reliable, that they're up, uh, they're responsive, uh, they're, I assume latency is probably a, a big priority as well. Yeah, uh, the two areas are of focus or two ways I look at the observability and observability is the core or the first layer in the pyramid of reliability. And we can look at observability as independent services systems, which is a lot more traditional look of how people view that. Like, you know, you have these metrics, you have all these uh, signals coming in. The other way to look at is why is it important from a business point of view? Right. And our business is uh, end users, right? Why does it matter? Like, you know, why, how come our product managers who are thinking about user features uh, care about observability or reliability. Just to slide, slide track, one of my previous leaders told me this, and reliability is like oxygen in the room. As long as it's there, people don't care. And the once the oxygen is sucked out, you know, you, you start feeling it, right? right? <laughs> Suddenly <laughs> and I, everybody cares. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and I strongly believe observability is the precursor or prerequisite for reliability. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what you're looking for, then you can't measure, you can't improve, you can't guarantee uh, the features to the customer. Now, so traditionally, I think we are in a decent shape with our cloud infrastructure and cloud observability. Um, one of the things that we are looking at is as a as a org wide metric, right? Time to first location is a we call it TTFL internal term. Time to first location, like how fast. Like when, when I, as a parent or a circle member, uh, open my app and, you know, how, how, how fast can I see the location mm. of my circle member, right? right. And, and then in our case, it's slightly involved and complex as a mesh architecture versus a traditional top-down architecture. Um, it's like I open the app as a parent. It's a mobile client. It reaches the cloud. It pings the child phone, child <laughs> app, and the child app sends back, talks to the cloud, and again, either through push notification or through something like MQTT, it comes back to parent, my app. And then, so there is multiple layers, and measuring this metric is not simple. Sure. Uh, and it has to be broken down, and this has been a challenge for us. We're trying to get this from different angles. 
and obviously we are working with providers like Datadog to how we can uh, use some of the technologies from Datadog to efficiently and easily <laughs> measure this, right? The other challenge that we also face is that observability, like, you know, uh, mean time to detection, mean time to mitigation, resolution, all mm -hmm. these things. Right. One of the hardest problems is how do you measure an incident and tie up with customer retention or mm -hmm. uh, revenue or, or, you know, trust broken by the customers, right? right? right. Like right. it's the incidents are like a constant beat uh, and you don't know when the straw is broken. Right. Right. That's another hard area, I believe. I mean, uh, to actually yeah. measure. C connecting those two is is is, is difficult, right. right? Without without any sort of, uh, I assume you probably talk to your customers and uh, these kinds of things as well. But uh, you know, it's without that direct uh, right. conversation happening, right. you this you is, it's very hard to know. This right. is where ability observability can play a role. I mean, it's easy. There are a lot of platforms there in terms of analytics and mm -hmm. ads where you can measure, oh, I did this campaign, here is the result. <laughs> right, right, right? right. And here is the revenue growth or not lack of revenue growth. And and, and this is one more area that I keep uh, um, as a challenge from a user point of view. Jesse, you want to cover anything from infrastructure side? On yeah, uh, well, maybe on the time to first location, right? And so, uh, you know, we talked about, you know, the, the uh, where we are in our multi-region uh, journey uh, so far. Um, and really that drives, um, uh, or driving or reducing that time to first location metric is really kind of where we want to, you know, one of the primary reasons, you know, beyond business continuity, um, you know, adopt a multi-region strategy for our application and ultimately for our customers, right? Um, so the sooner that a parent or a loved one can see where a member of their circle is on the map, um, the more satisfied they are, um, you know, as an end user. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and then on the infrastructure piece, um, you know, I, I, without observability, you don't know what's happening, right? Um, and so... Uh, we really look for solutions that help us get, you know, 80% of the way uh, with very little effort, right? Um, and we've seen that with Datadog, right? So getting uh, essentially uh, what you as, a, you know, uh, an observability platform, uh, you know, has determined are essentially pretty decent metrics to, to look at for, you know, any particular service um, uh, or a type of technology really helps us, you know, get up and running. And then that remainder, that remaining 20% is, is on us, you know, to uh, to implement based on our KPIs or what we deem uh, is valuable or important um, as an infrastructure organization. We talked about like business value metrics a bit, right? It's not something you can uh, extract necessarily. It's some of the things, the time to first location, that's that's a business value metric, of course, and we can derive that from the technology. But there are other things that are slightly harder to quantify from like a uh, how is my software running? How is my infrastructure performing? Yeah. Kinds of things. Uh, do you have some like high level uh, KPI type metrics that uh, are not necessarily technology related, but you, that you know it, what we see and where I'm going with this is we see we've seen other customers bring uh, those types of metrics into the platform into Datadog, and they don't necessarily have to come from like a technology standpoint. But what becomes powerful is being able to look at both uh, the performance of the systems um, and overlay like the business metric as well in into that so i was just curious if you have any metrics like that that might live outside of uh the technology stack that could be interesting to like bring into a, a single place to, to to look at it side by side yeah we, we do actually in the time to first location is the first of those metrics that has made its way into the the, the data dog platform for that particular purpose right so knowing uh you know how if we see a deviation and increase in t ttfl um, we then have, uh, uh, we can see everything in a single pane of glass, essentially, right? So we see that in a unified dashboard where we have, uh, you know, uh, uh, recording uh, or we've recorded uh, recent releases or any changes that have been made to the environment. Um, it, it really helps us determine whether or not uh, it's uh, due to an increase in app application usage in, uh, in a particular region or if it's due to uh, something that we may have done. Uh, to the environment that would affect the collection or the you know the increase in that that metric. I may add one more thing. I, I think this might be an age-old question, but I still think it's uh, still valid these days. 
background, I think we have about 200 microservices across the three arcs. Mm. And it's almost like either one per engineer <laughs> or more than one microservice mm. per engineer <laughs> that we have. Now, one of the core questions, again, coming from a business side, um, are we, do we need to do something if we are getting 10 million new users this quarter? Mm. We are a strong growing company, like we grow 20% every quarter. And there might be some events that are happening across the world in different, different countries that will trigger in a single day, like 10 million, 1 million users. This is great. I was going to ask you about this, actually. I was like, so, what's your Super Bowl? Like, you know, what, you know, what, what drives the spiky? Yeah, there are a couple of drives there. This, uh, I mean, this is not a, something to be proud of, but we're happy to be helping here. Like, for example, um, these are viral things that happen. For example, in Indonesia or some event happens and there is a press mm -hmm. or, or uh, Brazil or some one of the South American countries, there is a kidnapping of a, a teenager mm -hmm. and that caught up and then they felt like using life 60 is a safe thing, right? right? And that catches up virality. And those are some of the things and then there is also sometimes you know TikTok uh, campaigns <laughs> like you know uh, interesting things side topic two years back there was a TikTok one star campaign mm -hmm. and Life360 was uh, um, a victim of that oh. by the teenagers and our CEO was very brave and they'd done conventional thing and then they he engaged with them with the TikTok and you know we listened to them and then kind of uh, now I think there's a lot so of that drove it, drove up. Uh, it, it changed, and we can say that it's like some of those folks are running campaigns for us. Yeah. <laughs> that was against like one star rating, right? Uh, so all these things add a lot of virality. Uh, coming back to that original question, like the challenge is having so many services and so many technologies that we use, like AWS or other things. We think that everything is infinitely scalable, but <laughs> <laughs> there's always, uh, that's not 100% yeah. true. You need to know the limitations of certain there components, no right? Ones, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so one of the key questions is, oh, what does five, adding 5 million users to this component or service do? What's that's gonna happen? Right, right? Yeah. that's an interesting question and, and, and that's uh, another challenge. Uh, just wrapping up, uh, Naveen, Jesse, I want to thank you very much for coming here. Uh, the Life 360 mission is really just, it's amazing. It's, it's, it's ins inspirational even. Um, I wanted to give you an opportunity to um, give any advice you might have for other technology leaders, um, just parting words. Thanks, Chris, for inviting to this. A um, couple of things on top of my mind. Reliability and velocity are the same, uh, two sides of the same coin. One cannot live without the other. And that is where we're trying to make uh, strong improvements. Um, the other thing I would recommend is work with partners, whichever you choose uh, to solve your problems, who are willing to engage and uh, ideate along with you. And that is what we highly, we, we always think ourselves as part of beta of our, our vendors and customers mm -hmm. and that that makes it own the problem and uh, arrive at solution so yeah Jesse yeah thanks Chris uh, for having us both um, if I were to add anything pick tools and technologies that help uh, reduce friction within an organization and ultimately improve uh, a developer joy right um, you know when when people are happy um, you you tend to see better things right um, when they're not you know things aren't as good as they could be so um, you know, picking tools uh, that help you get there, you know, um, are, are really things that I would I would suggest that people focus on. Awesome. Thank you so both so much. This has been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.